on this segment of Moments with Murph, we're going to talk about where to find, you know, love. Like, and really, it's going to be where I think you should find love. And I'm going to, going to give you my top re, um, choices from worst to best. So, for starters, on this episode of Moments with Murph, let's talk about supporting uh, breast cancer for sure. For some of y'all who are watching the YouTube version, you see the shirts? If you guys are going to support, you know, this this fight, you should do it all year round. Not just in October, not just the day in October, like do it all year round. And that is legit. Thank you. So let's hop into where to find love. We're going to talk about where I find, where I think you should find love. And we're going to talk about from the worst positions to the best. So we're going to start at bars. Uh, num number one, so, okay, talk about, we're going to go from six to one. So, bars. Bars, to me, are the worst place you want to find someone. Now, listen, this is my opinion, but this is my, my feelings. I do not want to find my significant other at a bar. I will not look for my significant other at a bar. Now, 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 oddly enough, some solid relationships, according to Bustle.com, has started from bars and other outing activities, which includes clubs, at about 12%, so a of relationships that's where most people have found it or 12 percent of them have found it <clears throat> i will not find my person at a bar or a club why because i have absolutely no idea why they're there like if you find somebody at a club you have no reason you have no idea why they're there like it you won't know until you ask and people still lie like they can be at the club because maybe they lost their job and they're just trying to get drunk and that's their way of you know uh, settling that or maybe they're at the bar because you know it's their birthday that's cool but they're they're planning on blacking out like uh, maybe they're at the bar of the club because they do that every weekend or every night is that somebody you really want to be around you don't know until you act now i'm being biased i'm not being biased but you gotta think about it though because like you don't often know like why they're at the bar and you don't know what the reason is behind it <clears throat> again you want to know these things so you ask but i know that there's nothing wrong with going out and hanging out and kicking it but like when you initially find somebody i don't i don't really think you will find them at a bar because like i mean a, there's something wrong with the bar but like when you think about a bar you think about what just alcohol and sloppiness sometimes yeah I don't think a lot of us want to be associated with a sloppy, <laughs> a sloppy significant other. Because the thing is, like, what if that's something they commonly do? You can't really change that. That's something they like to do. They engage in going to bars, going to clubs. And the moment you try to step, you know, put your foot on that, then they might raise an issue. And... Uh, you don't, really, you don't really want that. Because let's just say two or three months down the road. And you're just like, yo, why do you got to go to the club every Friday and Saturday? You don't, you, you can't stay home like a normal person. Like, that's really going to like bother you. <clears throat> and this is from a male or a female standpoint. Like, we're talking about general right here. That person has burned in their brain. Like, I'm going to go kick it all the, every weekend. That's what I want to do. You can't stop me. How do you think we got together? Do you really want that issue? I think not. Next, we're going to talk about the mall. Again, this is included in that 12%. Now, I prefer, <laughs> I honestly would prefer the mall over the bar. But again, I they're kind of like neck and neck. Like if you're talking about out of 100%, like the bar is like 100% and the mall is like 99%. Like they're that close of what I don't want. Why? Because, again, you don't know why they are there. Like, you don't know what their intentions is. Like, you see somebody in the mall, and, like, no cap. Like, I see women there frequently. Of course you will. And they gorgeous. Like, women, honestly, time out. Quick 30. Women are beautiful. We are never going to avoid that. I don't care what anyone says. Like, they be like, oh, you trying to kiss up? Oh, you trying to? No, 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 no. Women are beautiful. I want y'all to know that y'all are beautiful if no one told you today surf merch said so back to the action so i see a lot of them and they're there but you, you see some types and you see and the ones that it, you kind of red flag you know blow the whistle 
red flag in the air are the ones with a bunch of bags. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with treating yourself. However, you don't know how often they treat themselves. Like, the, you might see them, they be like, oh, you know, it's a Saturday, so that's common for, you know, mallcation where they're just going to splurge. Now, to you, you know, you're a new person. So, you be like, oh, yeah, for sure, man. She out here just, you know, spending some dough. She got her own money, blah, 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 whatever you want to say. Or, oh, man, he out here kicking it. He out here with his boys. He out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, that's cool and all. But you, as a person who may want them, you don't know how often they be out. Like, what if at the mall every day, every weekend, or that once a month, like, is one of them big splurges, you know? Where it's not like, okay, like, if they went to the mall every day, they would have spent about $100 a day, which is still completely outrageous. But because they're busy, they can't go to the mall every day. So that day of the month when they can go, all 30 of those days, they didn't spend $100, they spent it all in that one day. Oh my gosh, that is a mortgage payment. But some of us don't see that <clears throat> when we're picking our people. And like me personally, again, like I, I, I'm going to be a little skeptical. I'm going to be a little biased because I'm like, I don't know what you're doing with your money. Like, yes, you look good. Yes, I see you spending your money. And you got some nice stuff. You know, you look you look good. You look you're cool. But how often are you engaging in that? That's what's going to be on my mind. And honestly, no matter who you are, that should be on your mind as well. Like if you see somebody with a bunch of bags, you want to know A, Hey, look at the bag names. Like, if they got high price bag names, good brands, high class, they are high maintenance, high end, you need to take that into high consideration. That's something you got to pay attention to because you may be able to compete with that. You may not be able to compete with that. So that's one. Two, you got to take into consideration of whose money they're actually spending because sometimes it might not be their money. It might be their significant other's money. So that means that person's off limits. But it might be their money or it might be you know, a parent's money, depending on what age group you're in. So, you know, we're in the 20s. Some of us are still, you know, staying at home. That is okay. For some fact is that we are trying to grow. We're trying to build. But if they're spending other people's money, then it's like, what is it that going to leave you when it's your turn? That means they're going to stop mooching off mommy and daddy, and it's going to be like, hey, baby, I need to go to the mall. You know, now you got an issue. And the thing is, you, <laughs> you really got to pay attention because, like, Again, with the brands, like, to me, if I see her shopping at H&M, you know, I'm going to say she's a little cost, you know, she takes budget into consideration because, you know, H&M isn't as high priced if you were to go to Macy's or if you were to go to MK or something like that, you know, like, you got to look at that because, like, look, if maybe, you know, she spends her money, you know, very bad, like, maybe she spent her car note on a Birkin bag. And not the purse, not the Hermes purse. I'm talking about like the little, there's literally a Birkin bag. Like you went in the store and you asked one of the gift bags. She spent her card on that. Cause y'all know them Birkin bags range from like six grand to like, like 500,000. Like you can buy a car with a Birkin. It's crazy. You can really trade that. But you know, <laughs> maybe she spent her money trying to showcase, you know, something she ain't really got. So she got the Birkin, you know, shopping bag, the Hermes shopping bag, but she don't have the real purse. Because you might ask her, you're like, oh, I seen you went to, you know, Hermes. See, you got you a Birkin. Where the bag at? You will never see that purse. She didn't buy it. She went and got the shopping bag to let you think that she was up there balling. Pay attention to that. And even with a dude, you know, maybe he spends his whole rent on some Yeezys. And he might wear the Yeezys maybe once a month. It's like, really? And the thing is, he might go buy Yeezys every month. So, like, think about it. If you buy Yeezys every month and you only wear them once a month, like, that begins to add up. And y'all, if y'all don't know, Yeezys aren't cheap. I don't care how much money I earn in my lifetime. I wouldn't, I can't afford Yeezys. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how much money I earn in my lifetime. I cannot afford Yeezys. But some people can. And they're also nice shoe. Go support it. Can't say that. But pay attention to it, though. <laughs> but that's something, you know, got to stay away from. So, the next place. Now we're in the middle range. It's, it's a kind of approval. Um, the grocery store. So we're getting a little better, okay? We're at the grocery store. We all need groceries. But this one's still on like the lower end of what I would approve of. Only for a simple fact is you got to pay attention to what she's buying, okay? Because that will tell you how she cares about her health or not. 
Like, if you see her with some, you know, some salad mixes and maybe some protein stuff and some peanut butter and jelly, some meats and produce, you know, then it's like, okay, so either she's trying to gain a little weight or she's trying to eat healthier, okay? But if you see her with the Twinkies, the snack cakes, you see her with a big bag of hot fries with some Arizonas and some Capri Suns, then you got to go, hold on, hold on, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. She might not care about her health for a fro. Like, that's something you got to pay attention to because, like, she might spend a lot of her money on those products. Do you think that's going to help benefit later on? No, because those cakes only last for so long. Yeah. Also, you need to pay attention to how much of the things she's buying because that's going to tell you whether or not, A, she has kids or if she has a family already. Like, in our age group, let's just say between 20 and 25, like, you can buy a bunch of groceries. You can think one or two things. Either she's at home, you know, with parents and she's, you know, helped replenishing the house. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you're going to live in a house with your parents, carry your weight. Period. But, even if she do live in a house, but she may also have a kid. So, she's not just feeding herself. She may be, you know, feeding, you know, little John John, little Tarion, Keisha, Taylor, Brianna, you know, he or she. Like, the, they may be parents and they're, you know, buying the food. Now, Really, I don't see a lot of guys grocery shopping, especially if it's guys like me. Like, I hate walking around looking for stuff because, like, I can't shop for other people because I don't know what you eat, even if, if it's still same things in the house. I will spaz out. I spaz on my mother. I was like, Mom, don't ever send me to the grocery store again. I'm like, I don't know about none of the smoked sausage. I'm like, you make, you get sausage, that's all I know. I got there and it was smoked sausage. It was Cajun sausage. It was skinless sausage. It was sausage with cheese. I was like, no. I literally sent her a very angry text. I'm like, Mom, don't ever, 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 ever in your life send me to the st- grocery store to the grocery shop for the house again. I will never do it. Like, you don't, you don't see a lot of guys grocery shopping, at least not by themselves. But... Pay attention to that because you can you you can identify who she's buying for. Now, the next stage. So we're talking about mm, number three. Number three. So school and college. <clears throat> and according to dating to love to know, about twenty eight percent of relationships started from high school, college. Okay, but we're not. Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about if you should bring a high school relationship into college. I'm gonna talk about that with somebody else. But I haven't told the person yet. But just know it's coming. But the good thing here is you have the you have opportunity to know this person. Like, you see them often, frequently. You get to see them in different environments, especially when you're in college. Because you get to see them, you know, in an academic setting. You know, you see how they handle their work. You get to see them in a business setting. You know, sometimes we have these conventions and these um, little programs where you have to be professional and very uh, formal. You know, you get to see them in a party setting, especially in college. Because, like, we all know that parties happen. I don't care what school you're at. It, it's going down. So... You get to see them in that setting. And then you get to see them how they are with with and without friends. And how they are with you with and without friends. And that gives you the opp- that gives you the opportunity to really look at that person and see, you know, who they are. Because some people really are two-faced. And it's disgusting. But that's some things you just can't change. But the good thing is, again, like, you don't have to, you know, go out your way to know these things. You get to learn them in person because you're around them frequently. So it gives you the opportunity to, A, save some money, but then also save some time. Because the thing is, like, y'all going to school. So they're paying for their school or they're in school for one reason. You're in school for another reason. Blah, 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 blah. But you don't have to go out your way to see these things. Like, it costs you absolutely nothing to see if they get their work done, you know, on campus, off campus. And see if they take those things seriously. That gives you an advantage to be like, okay... I don't really want to be that, be with that person, and you can keep everything on a friend standpoint. So even though you might want them, but after you learn these things, you're like, all right, no. And you never had to let them know that you even had that you like them. So guess what? The friendship's still there, but you just know that somebody you can't have as a spouse. Now, now we're talking about the ones I like. Here we go. Here we go. So my number two, now number two, we're talking about a bank. Oh. Uh, prime reason. They're at the bank. You know they have to have some form of money. Like, why are you at a bank if you're not, you know, making a deposit or cashing out? Or applying for, like, a loan that's, you know, needed. Like, you serve no purpose. But at a bank, like, you you know that they have to have, you know, a legit motive of being there. Like, they have to have some money. They have to be applying for something. You know what I mean? Like, there has to be some, some level of, you know, a, a, a push, you can say. Like, that's why I want to meet somebody at a bank. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm like, ooh, okay, okay. You no, know, she got, she got to have some money. Whether she, mm-hmm, yum yum. You know, she up here, 
up here in the bank teller face talking about give me my money. That is okay, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, you know they have a purpose being there. But you also gotta be careful because sometimes some of them are doing the wrong things where maybe they're swiping. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're trying to, you know, cover a debt that they have fallen into and now they're trying to figure out how to recover that. You know what I mean? So you need to... I ain't gonna say listen, but <clears throat> yeah, you gotta ear hustle a little bit just to see the reason that they're at the bank. Because if they if they making deposits or they trying to you know apply to let's say get a small business loan, that's where you want to be at. That means that person is about their business and they're trying to get things done. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> that's something you gotta um, pay attention to because like some people, you know, she let's just say she could be pulling money out because again she's in the crisis. That she didn't have to be in, but she wanted to go on that, you know, hot girl summer trip. Oh, well. And, you know, you got to pay attention to him, too. You know, he could be pulling hundreds, thousands out just to go, you know, be around his boys and go put it on IG. Those things happen. So that's just something, again, you got to pay attention to when you are looking at a person in the bank. Now, me personally, my ultimate favorite, my ultimate favorite, my number one choice where you should find a person is somebody in the workplace. And we're talking about a career place, you know, like real jobs. Not saying like real jobs, real jobs, but you know, like a real career job. You know, doctors, you know, nurses, you know, hospitals, my bad. Um, financial places, uh, marketing firms, uh, sales places, like places that you know this person has like a, a good job because they either are on the same level as you or above you. They might be below you, but again, you kind of know, you know, the range that they're in. And that's the whole, the prime reason. Like, you know, they have a job, you know, that they're good. And the thing is, like, if they're single, which they should be, you shouldn't be going to somebody else's spouse then you know that they have been doing these, <clears throat> they're, they've been about their business way before you. So that means you aren't needed, especially from a financial standpoint, to make their life better. But you are there to help for that companionship, which is always, you know, accepted. But again, like, they, again, they don't need you. They've been handling their business way before you. And that's why you need, that's why the workplace is my favorite place, because you got somebody who can really be your partner. You know, this person is going to do what they got to do. You can do what y'all got to do. and Y'all can grow together. So this, and this counts to me too for like conventions. Like if you meet somebody at like, a, let's say a financial seminar or you meet them at a, a real estate meetup or something like that. Like, you know that even if they are in a good position, but they're trying to make themselves better because now they're trying to seek, you know, assistance or guidance for people who really, you know, have been doing, you know, these things legitimately. So that's something you really want to, Yes, sir. You got a you got, round of applause. You find them there because that's that's where we're looking. We're looking for somebody who already has their own goals in place and don't need someone else to tell them what they're going to do, where they should be, what they want to do. Why? Because they was doing it way before you. So you didn't so much better them. You kind of just enhanced them because you might have been that puzzle piece that was they were lacking in like a low end. And now y'all came together. And guess what? Boom. Explosion. Why? Because things didn't take off. <clears throat> now, <laughs> with that being said, let's talk about my top three people that I want to get. So it is, what, April 9th, 2021, at the day of this recording. I'm letting everybody know, everybody who's listening, y'all will see me marry either an accountant, a nurse or a doctor, or a real estate agent. Why? Because they're in the areas that I want my wife to be in. So with an accountant, that means she, accountant, CPA, whatever the, whatever the matter is, I can meet her, you know, when she's, you know, filing my taxes. Because, like, over the long term, I'm going to need help with those. Because, like, my stuff is going to be so diverse. But, like, I know she understands numbers. Because I love numbers. So I love when I can talk numbers with somebody and not have to break down how I did something or where I got these numbers from. Like, I need, mm, love an accountant. And the thing is, like, she's going to know, understand the, the purpose and how money is really a tool and not just, you know, an object. I don't have to explain to her the importance of money and what you can do with it. She already knows. Not to that I tend, like, the, the accountants know how to really, you know, utilize their money. They make budgets. You know, they have to. They make budgets for other people and help them save money. So why wouldn't they help save themselves money? Along with that, why wouldn't they help their spouse, their spouse save money? That's the reason why I got to get an accountant, CPA, whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, too, like, I'm going to be an investor. I am an investor now. But, like, as my, you know, my empire grows, like, 
somebody's gonna have to help break down these numbers. So what's better than being able to, you know, love someone who's doing these things on a full time job? I mean, when you go home, you can talk about these things. It's a good thing. Now, a nurse or a doctor. That one should be self explanatory. Like you should, you can always meet somebody in the hospital. <clears throat> Honestly, that's, that probably could be in my list, but that that kind of works as like a workplace. But it kind of depends. But for me, like I know personally, like I don't take that much care of my body. Like I preach health and how you should take care of it. But if you actually look in depth into it, like it's about like 25%. Like I take great care of my body until it's time to recover. Like I don't use ice. I don't take pills. I don't use uh, warmers. I don't do rollouts. And I should do all of that stuff the way I you know beat my body up and the way I put through things. But I don't. So this is why if I have a nurse or a doctor, like it's going to be... You know, someone who's gonna actually like help you know my body get to where it needs to be. For some fact, is like I don't I don't be doing that. <laughs> I feel like I'm be having time to, but now that's really by choice. I'm like, nah, man. God said you know everything natural. So if I naturally got hurt, I got naturally recover. And <laughs> again, that's the wrong way to think about it. But that's just how I am. So with a nurse or doctor, like I can't avoid recovery. For some fact, is I go home with this lady. I gotta see her. I gotta wake up with her. She might even try to, you know, massage me or put me in an ice bath while I'm sleeping. You know, like, I feel like I need that push that's going to help really better my body. And it makes, like, a great, um, what do you want to say? Asset? Yeah. Great woman. Great asset. Because she's taking care of me and we can take care of each other. So, I think that's pretty solid. <clears throat> and then finally, the real estate agent. So, again, I'm going to be buying properties. Like, that's, that's just something I'm going to do. And with her having access to these, um these meetups and these listings that are off market, that's good, that's good. Because A, I know she has a job, so just, she has to have a stable income. But two, but three, two, whatever number it was, she has access to these listings that I need uh, idea for. That's actually gonna help benefit us. So a real estate agent, clear cut, <clears throat> she has access to some of these you know, crop areas and that's gonna be great. So we're gonna leave it at that at my top three. Like I said, you're gonna see me marry a nurse or a doctor or an accountant slash CPA or a real estate agent. Put it on that April 9th, 2021. Thank you. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So thank you guys for listening.